Hi, the purpose of this video is to give you a little bit background for your science fair project. Your science fair project has to use a scientific method in some way. It can be on almost anything, but it has to use a scientific method, which means you can't just build a volcano or make some model or invent something. It has to be a scientific method experiment. All right, this is my daughter's science project for high school, but we're going to use it as an example. Basically, these are paper white bulbs to flower. And you want to at, start with getting an idea and asking a question. And the question in this case might be, what median does paper white bulbs grow the greatest a number of centimeters? So based on that question, you do research. We learn all about paper white bulbs and how they grow and how plant bulbs grow and so forth. What kind of experiments have been done in the past? And then you're gonna write your background report based on it. After you have a little bit of research, then you are going to come up with a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an educated guess. And because it's an educated guess, it should be based on some research. So, Let's say that the hypothesis for this experiment is if a bulb, or I'm gonna say if a paper white bulb, paper white being a type of flower, is grown in water without soil, then it'll grow a greater number of centimeters compared to paper white bulbs that are born, I mean grown in soil and water. Now, since we're betting on the paper whites that are grown in just water with no soil, we're going to call that the experimental group. And we have to compare them to something. And we're going to compare them to the paper whites that are grown in soil and water. And we're going to call that the control group. The purpose of the control group is for comparison. The experimental group is the group we think is going to have more success or prove our hypothesis true. Again, our hypothesis is if paper white bulbs are grown in pure water without soil, then they will grow a greater number of centimeters than paper white bulbs grown in soil and water. Our hypothesis only looks at one thing, and it also is an if-then statement. Now, based on that, we have two groups. In this case, I have five paper white bulbs in pure water. That must be my experimental group. And five paper white bulbs that are grown in soil and water. That's my control group. The only difference between these two groups, and there's my cat, is that the median that the bulbs are grown in. The, the median that the bulbs are growing, grown in, one being water, one being soil and water, is the only difference between these. And that is called the independent variable. The independent variable being what makes these two groups different from each other or independent. All right, we gotta move my cat so we can see our experiment. All right, so the independent variable is the only thing that is different between our two groups. The dependent variable, on the other hand, I'm sorry, not the dependent variable. The constants, on the other hand, are everything that is the same between the two groups. And you want to try to have as much the same as possible. Same type of glass that they're grown in, same type of bulbs. We have five bulbs in each group. They're all planted at the same time. They have the same amount of sunlight and so forth. Everything that's the same between these two groups is called a constant. And you should have a long list of constants. Having a, thinking of all the things that to keep them the same is controlling your variables. There should only be one thing different between these two groups, and that is the independent variable. All right, then we have what's called the dependent variable. The dependent variable is what you're going to measure to see if your hypothesis is true or false. Now, we said that the bulbs in the water will grow a greater number of centimeters compared to the bulbs that are in the soil and water. So the dependent variable is the number of centimeters that the bulbs grow. Notice I'm using the metric system. You should always use the metric system. 
you know that your dependent variable was probably identified correctly if you could say that the dependent variable is dependent on the independent variable. Sounds like a lot of words. So the number of centimeters that the bulb, that the flowers grow, is dependent on what type of median they are grown in. The dependent variable is dependent on the independent variable. All right, that's how we're gonna set up our experiment. Has, that's using the scientific method. We're gonna take recordings of their growth. You need to have at least 20 data points. So I have 10 bulbs. As long as I record data, like the centimeters of growth at least twice, I'm gonna have 20 data points on day two. I mean, let's say day 10, there was this many centimeters of growth in, and you put it all on a table and then maybe I'll do it again in another 10 days. I mean, more data, the better. But when I say there's 20 data points, that means you've collected 20 pieces of data. So I have 10 bulbs and if I collect data at least twice, I'm gonna be at my 20. I have five for each group, five for the experimental group, five for the control group. And then the end, I want to see which group overall had the most centimeters of growth. If it's the ones in flowers, then my hypothesis is true. If it's the one in soil and water, then my hypothesis can be false. And if it's equal, my hypothesis is also false. And then I'm going to make a data table where I collect my information. It has to be measurable, it has to find some way to measure your data. and. I'm also going to make a graph of it. I'm going to write a conclusion statement and so forth. That is using the scientific method. And no matter what you're doing, um, the experiment has to use the scientific method in some way. And if you need help in, in um, getting that part organized and how to look at it or measure it, just ask Mrs. Jezrani or your science teacher and we'll be happy to give you a twist to make it into a scientific method experiment. But it should not be a model or an invention unless you have two different inventions and want to see which one does better or two different models and want, and, there, and it does something and you're testing to see which um, variable works the best. It has to be comparing one thing to another and in this case we're comparing water to soil. I hope this helps when you set up your science for experiment.